Hello there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. Now the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus have been out for a little while and one of the interesting features that we're seeing on this phone that we don't see on other phones yet is this idea of a dual aperture. And so the question I wanna look at today is, is the dual aperture feature a gimmick or is it actually really useful? Well, please, let me explain. So let's start with the basics. What is the aperture? The aperture is the hole in front of the sensor that's part of the lens that determines how much light gets through to the sensor. Now on a bigger camera, on a mirrorless camera or on a DSLR camera, there are many, many different uh, aperture settings, you know, 10, 20, depending on the camera. Now it's measured in what they call f-stops. Now f-stop is the ratio of the uh, focal length and the aperture size. And the reason it's a ratio is because obviously if you've got different format cameras, different size sensors, different types of lenses, then you need a way of measuring that uh, aperture relative to the rest of the setup in the camera. So on a bigger camera, a DSLR camera, then if you've got a lens with kind of f1.8, maybe f1.4, then that is a really, really fast lens. And maybe the kit lens that comes with kind of standard with the camera might be f3.5, f4, something along those lines. Now, as I said, it's a ratio and the ratio works uh, opposite to what you might think. If something is f3 or f2, it means that the aperture is wide. It means there's lots of light coming in. And if the number is larger, f8, f16, f22, then it means the hole is smaller and less light is coming in. Now the Galaxy S9 has the ability to set the aperture to f1.5 and f2.4. Now to compare that to other cameras, your kind of standard f number for a smartphone is around f1.7. The Galaxy Note 8 has an f1.7, the Huawei Mate 10 Pro has f1.6, the Pixel 2 has f1.9. Now what they've done with the Galaxy S9 is they've managed to open up that aperture to f1.5, but at the same time they've added a second one, which is f2.4. Now when a camera takes a photo, it plays around with three different settings to try to get the right exposure. One is the shutter speed, how long the shutter is open, how long the light is exposed to the sensor. The second is the ISO speed, that's the sensitivity of the sensor. How sensitive is it to light? How quickly does it register the, the amounts of light coming in? And thirdly, nor the aperture. Now normally on a smartphone that aperture is fixed, but on a bigger camera, as I said earlier, there are loads and loads of different settings that you can use. Now on the S9, the camera software now can choose not only between the ISO and the shutter speed, it also has two aperture settings that it can choose between, and the idea is it chooses the best one to give the best quality photo. Now the biggest problem is when cameras choose high ISO numbers, lots of noise comes in, and when they choose long uh, shutter times, then of course even minor handshakes just as you're holding the phone, can actually bring blurredness or a lack of clarity to the photo. So having that extra ability, the idea is that it can produce better pictures. I really hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, I'd like to remind you there is now a separate Gary Explains YouTube channel, and there I cover lots of technology outside of mobile. So if you're interested, go over to youtube.com slash Gary Explains, and I'll see you there. Now there are two reasons you want a large aperture. One is that you want more light to come in in low light situations. So indoor photography, nighttime photography, you want as big as aperture as possible. And then on bigger cameras, there's also you try to achieve this depth of field effect, the bokeh effect, but that's really quite hard to achieve on a smartphone, even when you've got an f1.5 uh, aperture. So we took some pictures with the uh, Galaxy S9, some at uh, f1.5, some at f2.4, to see what kind of differences we can see in the quality of the pictures that appear. Now, as you look at these pictures here, you'll see actually it's quite difficult to tell the difference between an f1.5 picture and an f2.4 picture. There really isn't much to call between them. The only time you can really tell the difference is in a low light situation. And this very last picture here is a kind of a, a picture we've made and we deliberately controlled the amount of light that was in this setup. And if you zoom in here to this robot's head and look at the color board behind it, you can see that actually there is extra noise that comes in and extra processing that has to go on when you're using f2.4 in this low light situation. So f1.5 performs much better. 
Of course, this is testing the two aperture settings on the S9, f1.5 and f2.4, but on a phone, let's say like the Note 8, it's already got f1.7, so the difference here in the quality would be much, much smaller. And we also did some scientific tests on these photos taken with these two different aperture settings and we found that actually photos taken f2.4 have a bit of clarity in the middle but they do have less sharpness on the corners whereas the f1.5 isn't quite so sharp in the center but it tends to keep that sharpness better across the whole photo. So when you put all this together, what have we got? Well, we've got the Samsung Galaxy S9 with the two aperture settings, 1.5 and 2.4, compared to a normal smartphone, which would have maybe uh, 1.7 or even 1.6. Now, when you actually take some photographs with this, what do you see? Well, what you see is that in low light, f1.5 can be a better help than uh, f1.7 uh, or even f1.9. And we can also see that there does seem to be some sharpness better at f2.4. But does that make a huge difference? Well, as you saw from the pictures I show, not really. So me personally, when I'm looking at this now, am I gonna call it gimmick or feature? I'm gonna call gimmick. <laughs> Now, I'm sure as soon as I've done that, there's someone already typing down the comments saying, you've been paid by Huawei, you've been paid by LG. Come on, people, grow up. I've studied the photos, I've looked at the technology, and this is my opinion. It's as simple as that. Okay, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Android Authority. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. You know what I'm gonna ask, please subscribe. Please become part of our notification squad. Please leave a comment below. And well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.